here. I'm your host, Reggie Milligan, co-founder at Mantry. This podcast is all about helping you cook better, and we do it through audio so you can listen to it on the go while you're commuting or while you are cleaning, and the idea being that when next time you get back into the kitchen, you're just a little bit more ready to go. So today we're talking Thanksgiving, and we just want to give some quick hacks, handy hacks that'll help you put together a stress-free Thanksgiving. So number one, the tin foil DIY roasting rack. So a lot of people don't have a roasting rack and Thanksgiving is one of these holidays where in general with tools, you need a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily ever use any other time of the year in the kitchen, like a turkey baster or they make you, they might want to try and get you to buy or roasting racks you know, these types of things, even like baking sheets, a lot of people don't have. But one thing you can do for your baking wrap is if you take some tin foil and make basically a long tube and then coil it up, you can place the turkey on top of the coil and that will elevate it. And the blog post, the show notes attached to this podcast there's a picture of it in the blog post but pretty simple but a lot of people just don't really think of it the the thing you want to avoid doing is actually putting the turkey directly on a baking sheet Um, it just won't roast as well and it might you might risk burning the actual bottom of the turkey number two great frozen butter directly into pie dough so this is a real simple one most pie doughs call for butter to be incorporated cold butter to be cubed and uh, incorporated as you mix it into the dry ingredients the flour and the sugar and whatnot so what you can actually do is if you just take frozen freeze butter and grab a cheese grater and you can grate in the amount of butter that they're asking you to use whether you know how many ounces or whatnot they're asking you so you can and it just it's very clean it incorporates the butter nicely throughout the dough so you get a nice flaky crust on the pie and it's really mess free and it's a lot easier than dicing up butter number three for pie weights um, if you're doing homemade pumpkin pie uh, rice works really well or dried beans you don't need to go out and buy fancy pie weights at Sir La Tabla or Dean DeLuca or one of these places William Sonoma you know you just use rice everyday rice is fine or uh, dried beans and with a little parchment paper or wax paper in between your crust and the quote unquote weights, the beans or the rice, and you're gonna have a perfect uh, weight so that when you pre-bake your crust in the oven, it comes out real nice. Number four, uh, another thing like rolling pin, a lot of people don't have, you can just use a wine bottle. Very, very simple, empty wine bottle or full wine bottle, whatever works. Great replacement for rolling out your pie dough. Number five, the super fast potato peeling method. So in the show notes on the blog post, there's a link to a video on how to do this. But basically, just avoid like pre-peeling. If you're doing boiled mashed potatoes, avoid pre-peeling the potatoes completely with a a vegetable peeler. Um, you You can either just boil them and the skin will come off way easier once they're boiled. But there's actually a method we posted there where if you take a little paring knife and run it, um, around the middle of the potato and then boil it the skin will shoot like right off in two two sections kind of like the way a kinder surprise or something unwraps so the hack one being you don't have to peel or scrub or whatever just boil the potatoes and peel them after you boil them while they're still sort of warm and to loot to, to really help the process a little knife incision around the center of the of the potato will make it very easy to peel Number seven, very simple tip to save some space because it gets crazy on Thanksgiving, keeping mashed potatoes warm in the slow cooker. Like a lot of people will throw them in the pot and the pot or keep them in the pot. Mashed potatoes is one of those things that gets kind of gummy and weirder when it gets cold. So I would just, if you have a slow cooker around, it's a great thing to pull out and keep um, your mashed potatoes warm or another side. And even generally speaking, like if you do chili for game day or something, like 
Keeping your mashed potato in a slow cooker, I mean, it's a pretty, you can't really burn something in a slow cooker. It's really hard. So it's a great way to keep something warm and everybody loves warmer mashed potatoes. So there's a good little tip. Number eight, another one for just like freeing up space. Use your cooler for beers and cold drinks and all that stuff instead of the fridge. Uh, it's sort of something people don't really think about, like cracking out their camping cooler in the middle of Thanksgiving, but uh, it saves a lot of space, keeps beers nice and nice and cold, and uh, yeah, frees up a lot of space for all that other stuff you got in the fridge. Number nine, if you have a small crowd, uh, you know, most people like to see a fully roasted turkey, but if you have a smaller crowd, just cook turkey in separate parts. Uh, there's a great quote here by Michael White, quote, cook the turkey breast and leg meat separately. They cook at different rates. So this avoids overcooking or undercooking one part. So not only are you probably going to end up with a better product, better tasting turkey if you cook it separately by dividing the breast and the leg meat, um, but it's just, it's just very easy. And like your guests can choose whatnot. I mean, cooking a whole turkey is actually pretty hard. So even if you have a bigger crowd, I've heard a lot of people just recommend cooking them separately. Like nobody knows the difference. Yeah, you don't have the kind of like money shot where you bring out the turkey and show it to everybody, but people would probably rather have like nice moist turkey than a beautiful looking roasted bird that ends up being dry. So consider cooking turkey parts separately. Number 10, a little quote from Bobby Flay about the carb. Quote, when carving your turkey, remove each breast and slice crosswise into thick slices about half an inch slices, then both legs, then the wings. So this is just the simple way to carve a turkey. Basically, don't just take the breast off the bone and then slice it rather than trying to slice it right off the bird. It's uh, much easier to kind of slice the breast as its entirety than to do that whole, sometimes you see it in like old commercials and movies and stuff. They're like slicing the turkey while, while it's still attached to the bone. It's actually way easier to just take the breast off and cut it up. And same with the wings. You can take the, you separate the wings and you separate the legs. It'll be easier to work with. Number 11, use oven dried, not stale bread for better stuffing. So a lot of people say use stale bread. It's kind of like the old you know, tail of the kitchen. It's actually much better to just use oven dried. So getting bread, throw it in the oven, low temperature, and drying it out that way. Uh, it's just better than stale bread. Stale bread's kind of gross. Uh, so consider, you know, when you're making your stuffing, just consider pre-oven drying your bread. And finally, 12, get a meat thermometer. This tip comes from Brian Voltaggio. Quote, invest in a meat thermometer. It's 25 bucks and will not only improve your Thanksgiving turkey, but will improve your roast beef, lamb, and more throughout the year. Make sure you get one with an alarm in order to have the perfect turkey and or roast. The temp alarm will ensure the right temperature without worrying about the timing per pound. So Brian's got a great point here. The alarm ones basically when it hits a certain temperature. So you can tell it, we want this temperature for perfectly moist turkey. When it hits it, it'll just go ding, 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 ding. And it's dead simple to cook perfect meats this way. Thermometer in general is an amazing investment. I mean, if you're going out and spending 60 or $70 on roasts and racks of lamb and, you know, and a nice big turkey, like you know, we, a lot of these things cost 30, 40 bucks plus, investing 20 bucks, 25 bucks on a thermometer will make sure that you're not destroying those cuts of meats, overcooking them, drying them out. So it's a great tip. So that's it. Those are our 12 handy Thanksgiving hacks. I'm Reggie Milligan. Thank you for joining. If you enjoyed it, please share. Good luck this Thanksgiving. Uh, if you are in the gift giving mood, you can check out our site, which is Mantry, M-A-N-T-R-Y.com. It's a food subscription where we showcase the best small batch makers around America, the best hot sauces from Texas or mustards from Vermont, charcuterie, salami, jerkies. We send out six products every two months. All Everything comes with recipes and a booklet on how to use the products and stories. Uh, all into a theme as well, like bourbon barbecue or maybe into the wild or maybe we'll be showcasing products from just Tennessee. But it's a lot of fun. And that's the end of that plug. So uh, most importantly, thank you for listening and good luck cooking out there. Uh -huh.